So here I am just going to quickly go through some of these um, images. And uh, one thing I noticed when um, my client came, how these blood cells are connected, like they are a chain. And normal, healthy, well-functioning, balanced blood, um, optimal blood, wouldn't have this. What we want is we want our blood cells to float around separately. They aren't supposed to be stuck together. And they actually are designed that way. They have a charge around the membrane, a positive charge around the membrane. And just like two magnets, if you put the same charge facing each other, they will repel each other. This is what happens with red blood cells too. And the charge is dictated by the elements embedded in the cell membrane as well as the contents of the cell themselves, as well as the contents of the environment that these cells are in, which would be the plasma. And if any of those areas are out of balance, then you shift that charge on the membrane. Um, it's a, it, and so when you diminish that charge on the membrane, so you don't have as much potential, because actually the positive is on the outside, but the negative is on the inside. And the stronger the negative and positive is, the more potential you have in energy. And so if that is changed and you weaken that force, then you weaken the ability for those cells to repel each other and they will just graduate towards each other and come together. So that's one element that you're looking for in the blood. Are these cells um, in good condition? Are they repelling each other? And the reason you want that is because the capillaries are only big enough to fit one cell in. And even then, um, they squash that cell. It's a very small space that that blood is pushed into near the end of the circulation of the capillary beds. And this is where one cell comes in and delivers its payload, its oxygen, and also absorbs the carbon dioxide. But that happens in the lungs. And it, um, there's an exchange of this oxygen into all the different capillary ends. So it's very important that the cells are the right size, the right shape, and they also have this deformability so that they can be squished into very small spaces, but when they come out of the small spaces, they pop out again. And this is why the blood cells are the particular shape they are. And actually, they don't even have a nucleus. They're the only cells in the body that do not have a nucleus. They don't have mitochondria. Um, they're designed quite differently and they don't divide either. They have uh, one lifespan and once they're gone, they're recycled and the body just continually produces more and more and more red blood cells as it continually reduces the red blood cells in circulation when they've done their work and they've come to the end of their life. Um, which is why blood is so good for um, picking up signals from the rest of the body because it's like the canary in the coal mine. If there is something wrong with the blood, then it's because we're producing two million cells every second. That's a lot of cells. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of resources, a lot of nutrients. That if there's anything, if there's a hiccup in that process, we spot it quite quickly. And often we can flag up things before they become really embedded as a, a negative aspect of our health. So we want those cells to be bouncing around. That's called the zeta potential, the way that those cells repel each other in circulation. Um, so that's just one picture that I can sort of talk about from my client to show you some, some things that are just off the radar as far as normal optimum blood goes. If you're interested in learning more about analysing blood yourself, do get in touch with us. Thank you.